What's going on guys? Back with another video. This time, I'm getting a lot of people wondering what the heck this is all about. Well, I did a video for you guys, and I showed you how I did it. So if you end up finding one of these that's unpainted, this is how you do it. Or, if you happen to try and make one yourself, you can still use uh, this video as a guide on how to do it. I did this shield for a good friend of mine. Uh, she lives out in California. Um, I picked this up for her. I felt really bad. It's taken me so long to be able to get it done for her. I only got it out like three or four days ago or something like that. Um, but that's been due to the weather here. It's been crazy hot. I'm up in Washington and you can't really paint in hot weather. It's been like 105, I think it was, during the process of me trying to get this thing painted for her. It was nuts. So I had to wait till like the nighttime or when days were cool to be able to get it done or unforeseen things not related to the weather, like my business. Uh, I've had lots of things going on lately, but I got it done and I wanted to share you with you guys in case you do want to learn how to do it yourself or uh, if you do want one of these I can do it for you so if you want to get in contact with me I can make one for you as well so uh, here is a few steps on how you do it yourself for this stage I used a razor blade some masking tape 100% acetone or nail polish remover I only use the frog tape for the, the edges and then move to the painter's tape. Once you have that masked off, I went ahead and went right back to the main shield. And then I took the razor blade and went around all the edges of the cracks to trim down the masking tape. This is probably one of the hardest parts of this process because you want to make sure that you're consistent throughout your whole shield. So as you're cutting with that knife, try not to move it. You're going to want to stick it in and find a groove and then just start following that groove line all the way down. And once you're done cutting, you can just start peeling away and seeing hopefully if you did it all right. So you want to go at a nice, slow, even pace throughout the whole thing. Otherwise, you could screw something up and have to remask it. But if that happens, it's not a big deal. You just reapply some tape and cut. Not a big deal. And it looks like that I did a pretty decent job here and all the lines are pretty pretty much the same. So that was good. The first shield I did, it didn't come out that well. This is my second shield that I've done. Then once you have everything peeled off, you, what you want to do is go through and check to see if there's no other, other little lips of areas that you might have missed during the pull. Because again, you want to make this as evenly as possible. Um, there's a couple spots here that I'm going over. You can kind of see uh, that are just overhangs, small little little flakes of tape that I got left behind. You want to make sure all of those are cut away. Mm -hmm. 
So everything looks pretty decent on the shield. I'm pretty happy with the tape. So I'm gonna move on to cutting the tape off the star. What you wanna do is feel around with your fingernail and find those groove lines and then just press in firmly. And then you're just gonna take your razor knife and you're gonna start cutting away. And same process as the, as the main shield. You're gonna to wanna to go at a nice, slow, even pace. Otherwise the tape's gonna peel off. And you wanna make sure that the tape stays adhered to the surface. Um, you know again extremely well because if you don't then as you're painting it it's going to start coming off of the surface and it, air or excuse me not air paint could get underneath it and that would be pretty bad because you have to restart everything all over again so as you can see here i accidentally cut the wrong one which isn't a big deal it's very easy to fix all you gotta do is just stick down another piece of tape and then just do the process over again it's a simple fix Once everything's all masked and cut off, you can kind of place a star on and see how everything's going to fit together. So for the paint, this is what I used. I used the Dupacolor Automotive Primer Adhesion Promoter. It's just a primer to get your paint to stick. For the red color, I used the same brand, Dupacolor Metal Cast. Uh, this stuff's pretty awesome. It'll stick to metal. And for the blue, same thing, Dupacolor Metal Cast. Now, as an alternative option, I didn't quite like how it turned out, but that's my personal preference. I use the Duplicolor Clear Coat Lacquer. It, I don't know, it, it does a great job. It seals it up and it's super durable, but I didn't quite like the finish that I got out of it. Just my personal preference, but this is what you would use if you wanted to put that extra clear coat on. Before you start painting, what you're going to want to do is re-clean it with the acetone. You want to make sure all the fingerprints and oil and smudges and everything is completely wiped off of the shield. Once it's clean, you want to make sure that you do not touch it again. You want to make sure that the paint can properly adhere itself to the surface of the metal. Uh, so it's very crucial to not touch it after that. If you touch it, you know, no big deal. You just got to re-clean that area that you uh, touched. Once it's all cleaned up, you can move on to the um, adhesive promoter, which is basically a, a clear primer. It preps the surface so that the paint will stick you know, even better. Even strokes across the shield, just back and forth. Once you put this on, you get, you're going to want to put the paint on within 10 minutes of the application of the primer. You're going to just want to do even strokes back and forth and you're going to want to layer it up. You want to put thin layers on at a time because you want to make sure this gets put on evenly. Now when you're doing it with this process, you want to make sure you're in an area that is minimal dust <laughs> and or bugs. As you can see, a little bug got on the shield and I did have to go the back and repaint that. I didn't get that on recording, I just went through and fixed it. Wasn't it too big of a deal, but there was a small little spot that didn't get hit with the paint. Uh, you're going to want to let this sit for at least a couple of days untouched. Um, that just enough for the paint to cure. Now it depends on where you live. Um, and your temperature and humidity levels can, will have an effect on you know, dry time. Um, now it could be dry to the touch within you know, maybe an hour or two, but it won't be 100% cured, so you don't want to touch it. Like It'll still be soft, so if you like, took your fingernail to it, you could actually dig into the paint, and you don't want that. So you're going to want to check, the, your, check your paint can and see what temperatures that it's supposed to be dried in and uh, just give it a couple of days. Usually within a few, like two or three days, it should be good. But again, it just depends on uh, like areas of uh, where you live on how, uh, how fast or how slowly that the paint will cure. So as the uh, shield is drying, I moved over to the star. Um, what I did before I uh, before I put the primer on, I cleaned it ahead of time. I want to make sure there's no fingerprints, grime, dirt, all that stuff. And then I put on the primer. You just want to repeat the same process that you did for the shield. One layer at a time until you kind of get to the layers that you like. And then once you start getting that layer you like, you can put on a little bit thicker coat to finish it off. So here is everything after it has dried. Now, I think it's been a couple of days since I painted it and everything looked pretty good. You can start the peeling process. Now when you do this, you want to go really slow. Um, I sped this up for you guys just to make it a little bit quicker, but you want to go a little slow. You don't want to go too fast because 
in case that that overlapping paint, you're just gonna peel it right off. You don't wanna do that, so you wanna go slow. You, what you can do is put on a, uh, your own type of clear coat. Now, if you're gonna wanna do that, then you're gonna wet sand the whole thing and then do your clear coat. Uh, but I'm not doing that because this ha the type of paint that I'm using actually has a clear coat built in um, and I like the finish that they gave me. Some things you're going to need. You're going to need these D-rings. Now this is all personal preference. This is what I use. You can use whatever you want. Um, but I found these D-rings over at uh, Harbor Freight. They work pretty well for what I was going to need them for. And then I used a belt I found at Target. Brown leather belt. And then I'm using JB Weld to put on those D-rings. What I did here was I cleaned the surface first with acetone and then I marked off uh, the spots where I'm just going to put those D-rings and I just placed it on the shield. Now this is where I cut some corners and I highly recommend you do not do this but I was running low on JB Weld and I went to a bunch of stores and could not find it. I went to about four stores and I, I could not find it so I thought I didn't have enough so what I did was I mixed it directly on the shield and that is, I know, a big no-no, but I thought I would do it, this would still be okay. And well, no, it wasn't, and I'll show you that here in just a minute. But what you're normally gonna do is mix up that JB Weld, part A and part B, in a separate container, and then apply it directly to the shield after that. That's what you wanna do. But once you do that, you just apply each one and then let, let it sit for a few minutes, depending on what you're using. This is quick, quick weld, it's supposed to be set in about six minutes but I let it go for about 10 to 20 minutes each one, then I moved on to the next. You wanna make sure that D-ring is applied before you stick that uh, the connector piece on and it's free moving and there's no weld, GB weld near it because then you don't wanna weld that to the shield and have it not be able to move. You want it to be able to be flexible and move. Once those are cured enough, I think I waited about an hour or two just to let everything set up. It's not 100% hardened because I think it's about, this is a six hour to harden. Uh, epoxy it's like six minutes to touch and then about I think six hours to full cure um, once it's fully set up um, what you can do is get your strap ready to go and all I did was is took a uh, belt chopped off an end kind of measured it to, uh, to fit cut a couple extra holes for adjustments and then just place it through the loops like so So what I used for the handle was just the extra part of the belt that I cut off um, and just looped it through the, the D-rings and got a good, good, got a good length and just cut off the excess. And then I glued everything together with a uh, Loctite type of epoxy. And I, I clamped everything down overnight and it was good to go. For the star plate, it's just as exactly the same process as the straps. You're just going to want to take the JB Weld and mix it in a bowl. As you can see, I did it correctly this time. And then apply the mixture, part A and B, to the shield and then just drop the, uh, the star plate on. And then you're done. Then the next morning, I went ahead and grabbed it, put it on my arm, and then this happened. So this is the part where you do not want to mix everything on the surface. This is a prime example. I didn't mix it properly. This means the bottom surface and didn't properly combine with the part A and part B. So it didn't actually adhere. It just popped right off. Now, that was the only one that popped off, so maybe the other ones were good. But what I did was I redid it all. After a few setbacks and having this video stuck in my head. Here's the final results.
Just want to say thanks for watching my video and be sure to subscribe and check out my new web series, The Toy Kings. Uh, it should be airing um, hopefully in the next three weeks. Not sure exact, but that's the that's the goal anyway. Um, but as always, see you later.